live with Kilmarnock against Rangers and BT Sport today and your commentators are Stephen Cragen, Kevin Thompson and Rory Hamilton. Thank you very much, Daryl. Two clubs looking to bring some festive cheer amidst what has been somewhat of an up and down season so far. At long last, Rangers have resolved their managerial situation and Graham Murphy will take charge of the first team until the end of the season at least. He suddenly came across some stumbling blocks during his time as an interim boss, but now supporters will hope the stability will transform into an improvement on the pitch. That's essentially what has occurred here at Rugby Park. Lee McCulloch departed in October and Kilmarnock have produced quite a coup in managing to attract Steve Clark. But there is Graham Murphy. He will take the reins until the end of the season for Rangers and what an opportunity for him. Well, it's three victories in four games for Kilmarnock and there's only one change from the side that defeated Motherwell. Jordan Jones replaces Chris Burke. Well, Scott Boyd, who scored the only goal last weekend, keeps his place with Gordon Greer still nursing a groin injury. Kirk Broadfoot and Chris Boyd come up against their old club. Eamon Brophy has four goals in his last four games. Graham Murphy's first selection as full-time manager sees two changes from the starting 11 that lost at home to St Johnson. Ryan Jack is suspended. Bruno Alves is rested with important games to come in the next seven days. That affords a chance to David Bates for his fifth appearance of the season and Lee Hodson who comes in on a pitch he knows well, having had a loan spell here two seasons ago. Jason Holt makes his 100th appearance for Rangers and scored when the sides last met at Ibrox in October. Well, you're right, Roy. Steve Clark has got the best out of these Kilmarnock players. Chris Boyd is bang on form. Eamon Brophy bang on form. And then Jordan Jones on the left-hand side. Just keep an eye out for him. Lots of pace, a great ball carrier. And he will certainly pose Rangers problems. Great opportunity for Graham Murray. He's off to a good start here. Looks like he's going to go 4-4-2. I think Windass will have a bit of free reign to play off Morales. It looks interesting to see Declan John playing further up the pitch today. A dramatic conclusion to Steve Clark's first game in charge. That saw the end of Pedro Caixinha's Ibrox reign. There's been a lot of football played between then and now. Last weekend, Hearts showed everyone that Celtic are indeed beatable, and the destination of the championship may not be as much of a foregone conclusion as most perhaps assumed. It's up to the rest put a, to put a consistent run together and mount what could be a title challenge. Jones early on swinging a ball in, looking for Boyd, and then cleared away by McCrory. Taylor's throw for Jones, and Tavernier will have a Difficult defensive task against the flying Northern Irishman. Greg Taylor. Boyd and Danny Wilson for company. It's away by Declan John, who just signed yesterday on a three and a half year deal, making that loan move from Cardiff City permanent. This is what Kilmarnock will want in Steve Clark. Try and put Rangers in the back foot early on, play the game in their half. The surface is not great, it's a windy day. Don't take any risks. I think that's been the message that Steve Clark came in, and that's the reason why the game started this way. The Rangers have had a tendency of late, certainly, to raise their game against those in and about them in the table, in Hibernian and Aberdeen producing some fantastic displays to pick up all the points in those games, but then letting slip points particularly at home to Hamilton and St Johnson and also up at Dens Park Kilmarnock on the other hand have been very solid indeed of late 10 points from their last four games the best run of league fixtures for over three years Tavernier, Windass had gone a little early and the flag eventually goes up. You can see already Rory, that Josh Windass is really going to have to do a disciplined performance today. You can see Jason Holt and Ross McCreary, they're already shouting out to get back. He's going to be the one that's going to need to sit on that deep, deepest line midfielder for Kilmarnock. And it's certainly a solid 
midfield three that Kilmarnock have been able to put together with Gary Dicker, Dicker Alan Power and Yusuf Malumbu. And Steve Clark knows well from his time down in England. And he's a man that certainly brings a wealth of experience. And a few names uttered around Rugby Park of late with January approaching that have whetted the appetite of the home supporter. Sebastian Bassong has been training with the club. Aaron Chibola as well has been mentioned. Doing a deal is another game altogether though, but that's given away. And here's Josh Windass. Fires it across, Jimmy McDonald safe in the knowledge that there were no opposition players coming into the six-yard box. It's now with Declan John moving a bit further forward from his regular role at left back. Lee Hodgson coming in. But Declan John certainly adept as a left winger. It's perhaps even his more natural position. This is Windass as it comes to Hodgson and the Monarch players, Chris Boyd in particular, getting stuck in against his old side. That pattern of play comes from Jordan Jones being sloppy on the other side, giving up cheap possession, something Steve Clark's side haven't done. Now Rangers have the ball, moving it well. But this is what Kilmarnock are all about, keeping the shape and being difficult to play through. Wilson's ball into Morelos, who just couldn't get turned, but here's John. Flying block coming in from Broadfoot, and Holtz unable to hit the target. You can already see Declan John, it's, it seems his foot are more naturally getting forward, confident enough there on his right foot to go inside and have a shot, and it looked like he caught it really well. Well, Graham Murphy was named in interim boss way back on the 26th of October, 59 days ago, and he has now got the reins until at least the end of the season. He freely admits that... He has to win over the supporters and pundits, and the only way he can do that is by getting results on the pitch. Well, Graham's been very honest about that. You know, he's fully aware of the responsibility of being a Rangers manager, how to conduct himself. So far, he's done very well. And the indication from yesterday's press conference as well was that he will have final say over transfers with the window approaching I think that's only right Rory that he gets the opportunity to, if he's going to be the manager on a full time basis he gets the opportunity to bring in his own players I'm sure of course the consultation will be had with Mark Allen the director of football and he'll, he'll earmarked players that can come in and do a job but Graham Marty will have the decisive say as captain in the absence of Alves and well, Lee Wallace and perhaps Ryan Jack as well, Kenny Miller too. There's a lot of experience has gone out of this Rangers side of late. It's Hudson, flipped on by Holt Morelos, unable to control it. You can just see, you know, Kilmarnock gets so many men behind the ball. You know, they consolidate out of possession. That's something I spoke to Chris Boyd about a while ago. Steve Clark has simplified the game. Out of possession, recover as quick as you can. He's worked miracles with the squad who look as if they were destined for relegation. What a turnaround he's had, but the players have to carry out his instructions. And so far in the last 11 games, they've done that. What do you think, Stephen, has been the, the difference that Steve Clark has brought to this Kilmarnock team? Because... They were really, really struggling in those those opening eight games or so. They have a better structure about them. The players understand the rules in and out of possession. And as a player, that's all you want. Take away any kind of doubt. Take responsibility as a manager. This is your role and responsibility. And the players have carried it out. Which ultimately, Rory, has saw them winning games. What will be Gary Dicker to take this free kick? Floated forward, Wilson has eyes on it, drops for Boyd, and the shot comes in, a half chance for Eamon Brophy. The man in form, oh, and Dicker's just 
got his foot caught there and win that. Well, two big, big chances in the space of 30 seconds. And it's a big opportunity for Josh Windass. Just a long, hopeful clearance up the pitch, and Gary Dicker loses his feet. I can't believe Windass doesn't take him on. I'm really surprised he's had the shot. He's got the pace, and this is the chance just before him and Profi. Four goals in four games. That's the guy you want the ball to fall to. Let off at both ends. I think you're doing West Fallen a wee bit of disservice there, Craigs. I think that was a terrific ball. It's always picking it up on the run. West Fallen are looking for that early pass, and a great execution, side foot volley right into Josh Windass's path. I think the first one comes off of Kurt, uh, Kurt Broadfoot backing in, being a nuisance. And it'd be fair to Broffy, you would fancy his chances there. Well, that brief spell is anything to suggest. The next 82 minutes should be rather interesting. It's Alan Power. Well won back, though, by Daniel Candeas. Looking forward up to Morelos. Good initial hold up work, but his route blocked off by Greg Taylor. That's going to be a challenge today, Rory. See if when Morales, when it does go up early, when he does get a hold of it, can, can Rangers get, a, get amongst them? Can they get bodies forward to support him? Well, Windass wins the free kick from Dicker. It wasn't taken from the correct spot, according to referee Willie Collum. Well, the Rangers fans are frustrated because they had possession. You know, yes, it was a foul on Windass, but they were about to build a pattern of play, and he called it back and stopped it. Then the ball was two yards away from where it should have been, so just a little general frustration amongst players and fans towards Wally Collins. Tavernier. No Rangers player in the vicinity. Comes back to Jamie McDonald, who saved the last-minute penalty from Daniel Candeas when they met in October and Kilmarnock went upfield and Chris Burke in the 95th minute managed to grab an equaliser and that was the final nail in Pedro Cachinho's coffin. That was Steve Clark's first game in charge. It's just Danny Wilson's right hand you can see there but Chris Boyd didn't really overly appeal for the free kick but that's going to be a huge battle this afternoon. Young David Bates and Danny Wilson Coping with the physicality, the physical presence of Chris Boyd. And captain on captain between Chris Boyd and Danny Wilson. So Jordan Jones awaits the whistle from Willie Collum. It's floated in and out comes Wes Fodringham. Confident claim from him. And again, looking for the quick ball out wide. Candeas was on, but didn't quite have the accuracy to release him as he had done with Windas earlier. Yeah, he's looking for that one earlier, Rory. He's, he's always on his toes when he catches it. He's looking for the counter-attack. And I think if he'd executed it better, Candice had already got goal side the, the defender there, so it would be a good opportunity to break. Tavernier launches it forward. To pass for Morelos there, who's started to find his form in front of goal again scored in his last three after 10 games without finding the net There's Chris Boyd trying to weave his way through Malumbu he's done well there Jones Receives a yellow card. Well, that's Jordan Jones at his best. 1v1 against defenders. People question Tavernier, can he defend? Does he look out of sorts at times? Well, jo Jordan Jones will certainly test him. And with, what, 79 minutes left on the clock, he runs the risk of another lunge tackle. Could potentially be a red card. Excellent Jordan Jones, though. Probably the last thing any fullback wants. 11 minutes into a game, receiving a yellow card and facing a man with ample pace to run at you for the rest of the contest. This boy ready to pounce. It's a dicker to take. There is Boyd. 
couldn't quite angle the header on target. He was stretching. Well, they worked it very well. They almost blocked in the middle of the goal just to free Chris Boyd up. Chris couldn't get around the back, but Kilmarnock seemed to have the physical presence, the physical stature on Rangers and set plays, and Chris Boyd at them will certainly play an important role this afternoon. Another thing you can see, Steve Clark's been working on the training ground set pieces. It's not just throw it in the box and hope for the best. You know, a good, well-worked block there, and you know, Chris manages to get away for the young boy Bates, and he'll probably be disappointed when he sees that one back. They never, they never hit the target. He's had them. It's Hudson. It's the seventh appearance of the season for him. Broadfoot towards Brophy, who was beaten well by Bates, but Kamarnik have it back, and Malumbu now feeds Jones in the anticipation when he gets the ball, feeds Brophy, and uh, well shepherded out by David Bates. You can see as soon as he picks up that ball, Jordan Jones is really actually played with him at Middlesbrough, he was a young boy coming through the youth team, and he always believed in himself, even though he was a young lad. And you can see that as soon as he picks up that ball, you're guaranteed Steve Clark's telling him, get at them, get at them. It was a terrific pass as well, and he broke his back. Well, you can see exactly why he's been picked in the starting 11. Okay. Broadfoot at the back post, it's hooked on, and Tavernier in position. Power out to Jones. Faced by Morelos, good defending from the Colombian. Long for Windass. That comes McDonald. <laughs> Stephen O'Donnell blocked off by McCrory. And bursting for this is a fine run by McCrory, but power in there to win it back for Kilmarnock and then win the free kick. It's good play all around, isn't it? Initially, the just sheer determination, the will to go beyond people with young Ross McCrory. Then it was a cheap free kick from Morelos. Never going to win the ball. Good defending by Power. Well, Ross McCrory must be learning all the time, and this really is first rookie season as a professional footballer. And he's naturally a centre half, isn't he? But been then put into a defensive midfield role and. Then even perhaps a little bit further forward today in a 4-4-2. Yeah, it's a different challenge for him today, playing as a two, rather than being the one that sits in behind the play. I think he's done that terrifically well, but you know, it's a big challenge for him today, playing against Malumbu, who's an experienced player. You can already see that he's got a bit of class around him, takes the ball in really well, he spreads it around, and he's like the dictator in there for Kilmarnock. He just sits behind the ball, keeps on feeding boys like Jordan Jones to try and get Kilmarnock on the front foot. Incredible to think at the age of 30 years old that Yusuf Malumbu had been without a club since May after he was released by Norwich City in the summer. Here's Power. O'Donnell closed off by Holt. Now Hudson. McCrory just caught on it there by Malumbu. Was alert enough to win it back. Donald now though and looks for the direct approach to Chris Boyd. Malumbu again. Well, he offers so much strength. A calmness in the middle for Kilmarnock. It's been an impressive start from the Congolese midfielder. He just looks so assured, Malumbu. You know, he knows how to use his body, he knows how to roll out of positions. He simplifies his passes, he's not playing 50, 60 yard balls, he's just feeding the ball into the boys further ahead of him, posing Rangers problems. Well, he was actually sold on a move to Scotland by Graham Dorans, who he played with at West Brom and Norwich City. Well, almost given away there by Stephen O'Donnell. Rangers are really struggling to make any impact in the final third. You know, they're tickling the ball about midfield, they're making passes, probably quite negative at times, but can't really get Windass into the game, can't get Morales into the game. Holt hasn't really been involved at the top end of the pitch, so something's going to have to change. They have to move it quicker, Craggs. They they're playing wide boys and playing a flat four. You have, you have to move the ball really quickly from one side to the other. Get Declan John, get 
Can Diaz involved in the game? Declan John's involvement there was cut short as he filtered infield. Here goes Brophy. It's back with Danny Wilson, the Rangers captain. Searching out Daniel Candeas. Morelos. Tavernier. Windass look for the ball onto Morelos as they try to form a partnership, but Morelos was offside. He's a wee bit unlucky there, to be honest. It's a, it's a clever wee idea for Josh Windass. Good fast pass into to James Tavernier and Morelos just, just going offside. I think you can see the, the part they play already, the way Danny Wilson quite happy to put his foot through it and, and get it long. The, the times that Wes has picked the ball up, they're, they're, they're trying to use Josh Windass's asset to get in behind to try and stretch the game at the moment. It just has to come forward with a wee bit more quality. Donald, that's a searching ball up the line and it finds Brophy, he's got Boyd in the middle and does come for Chris Boyd. It's a great play there, it's, and it's, it pains me a wee bit to say it, but the check on Nasser tough, that you don't get on the grass, you know, it checked a wee bit for Brophy and it, it almost come away from him when he tried to get his cross, he got his foot round and then same again when it checked for Boyd running into the into the box, I think it's, it's a big frustration when you've not got that nice bounce on the grass. Well, it's just a simple ball, listen to my Stephen O'Donnell, just put it into the channel. You know, let Rangers turn and face their own goal. Brophy, always a willing runner. When he puts this cross in, Danny Wilson misjudges it, Chris Boyd misjudges it, and people talking about the home side having an advantage because they train here every day. Well, Chris Boyd still can't read the surface, but big let off for Rangers, good play come on. That goes Dicker. By Hudson. Power will just see that one out. Come on, we're expecting the throw. Broadfoot to Dicker. And Boyd again offering the run in behind Danny Wilson. And Boyd, well. Was expecting the corner kick, no joy for Chris Boyd. Yeah, he's clever enough to make that run, Chris. It's, it's not a natural run for him to run into that channel. He'd rather someone else do that and, and him be in the box. But it shows what Steve Clark's getting out with these players. Um, you know, it's a team game, and since sometimes you have to make that run, you have to make that option. And, and Chris was more than willing. He was a wee bit unlucky to, to not try and win his team a corner. Unsuccessful in trying to deceive the uh, assistant <laughs> reaper. It's a bit like Boyd. And he looks long for Brophy to chase. Fodringham slices that one. Well, it's just another example of, of Steve Clark's style of play. Maybe particularly on this surface, that if there's any doubt, just turn the opposition. You know, Stephen O'Donnell's done it a couple of times. Kurt Broadfoot there, just putting it in behind. Put the opposition on the back foot. Donald to launch a long one, it comes for Brophy, but the decision goes, I think, against Chris Boyd there. Yeah, you can see here, he's just trying to back in, he's actually got his elbow up across Danny Wilson's face, and he's just been a nuisance, typical Chris Boyd, he's, you know, in there, in, in amongst the sticks, wanting to get, a, get an opportunity to get a sniff at a goal. Up against a man you'll know well in Danny Wilson from... Yeah, and you can three spells at Rangers. You can see that already, Rory, that he's playing more predominantly on Danny Wilson than he is the young boy Bates, which you know a lot of people would maybe think you know Bates been a wee bit less inexperienced. You would think he would potentially play on him, but he's playing more on Danny Wilson at the moment. Windass, but out comes Broadford and coming forward is Jason Holt. Candace. Drop it back for Tavernier. It looked initially to open up very kindly for Holt. And Kamarnik have seen to the danger. Wilson just adjusting himself. And McCrory 
Knocking that one back to Fodringham. Not the cleanest of contacts from the goalkeeper. It's worked out OK, though, for Rangers. No handball against Morelos. McCrory. Here comes Scott Boyd. Sticking close to Morelos and Jones has it and he's past Tavernier. Remember who is on a yellow card and that's what the home fans are trying to suggest to referee when they call him. It's a yellow card all day long. Jordan Jones gets the ball past him, very similar to the first one. He's gone. You can't leave your right leg dangling. I said it after 11 minutes. He has to be careful. You can't go lunging into those tackles. Willie Collum has left Kilmarnock furiated and huge let off for James Tavernier. Should have been a second yellow card. Tavernier should be walking down the tunnel. Yeah, he's a lucky boy there. He really is. I think it typifies James Tavernier as a defender. He's too square onto the ball. When he chops him inside, to chop him back out. He, you know, he gets himself in a tangle. And I think when you go square on as a defender against a tricky winger like Jordan Jones, you're leaving yourself up for for being a bit of difficulty. There certainly was a warning directed from Willie Collum towards James Tavernier. He won't get away with too many more of those. Well, then comes Power, and he was kicked by Declan John. Come on, it will have another free kick in a good position. He started the game really well, Power. He's, you know, he's picked up. He lost his scraps, he's not really caught the eye and, and done anything too flashy, but he's always been up in the second ball. He's, you know, he's done a terrific tackle on the edge of the box, and, and when he has had the ball, he's, he's been really neat and tidy. Come on, it have simply upset Rangers. You know, they're closing them down, putting them under pressure, not allowing the settle on the ball, they're always the front foot. Another dangerous situation for the home side. It's Gary Dicker who comes across to take the free kick. Footed towards the back post. Boyd rises high enough and power went with the right foot and opened up nicely for the left footed strike. Now Rangers can look to break. Advantage played. Windass. And he spots space out on the right hand side for Tavernier. Now Candace. Tavernier continues his run. Paul McDonald has slipped through his grasp. Lucky for him that O'Donnell was on hand. Well, the game being played at quite a pace. Malumbu to Jones and Kilmarnock will look to feed him all day long. I think he's looking for Gary Ticker. I think it was Declan John who just laid the ball off to, to Josh Windass. <laughs> I love it when a player tries to play his innocence. Me, really? Did I touch him? Absolutely, you did. I can't believe he hasn't booked him either. There's Declan John playing the one-two. Gary Dicker knows what he's doing. This is Jimmy McDonald getting a huge let off. The irony of it all would have been James Tavernier put the cross in. But Jimmy McDonald, huge let off. Stephen O'Donnell hooking the ball clear. It's Greg Taylor's throw. Corey's header. You think Kilmarnock having the extra man in midfield, Kevin, has given them more impetus in the game? I think so. I think it's a new challenge for, for Jason Holt and Ross McCree. I'm not saying they've never played as a two before. I don't know about Ross. You know, Jason certainly will have, but I think Malumbo, although he's been a bit quiet in the last five minutes, he's, you know, he's, he's imposed himself on the game, and, and at the moment, Kilmarnock are really, really comfortable. John having to go a long way back and entices O'Donnell forward. I think when you play the extra man in midfield, Craig, I, I, I think you need to expose the weaknesses, and I, I think Kilmarnock are weaker in wider areas. I think because Kilmarnock are congesting it in the middle of the pitch, it then means you need to move the ball quicker. I still think fullbacks are on out, and then you've got Declan John and Candias as well. And I think if they're just going to keep on throwing it down Morales' throat all day, then I think Josh Windass will get star for service. Goes Tavernier. Now Malumbu. Looks out Broadfoot. The wind being offered by O'Donnell. Brophy is there, but the flag is up against the former Hamilton striker. 
Rangers just unaware of where he is. You know, he just has to have a little look over his shoulder, try and stay on side. Rangers keeping a good line, but good drive and play again by Stephen O'Donnell. Quite prepared to step into the game when there's a little bit of space ahead of him. But Kamarnik being brave almost at times, leaving two up top as well. So it's a great battle. went up. Well, later on this afternoon, BT Sports score returns to your screens today from 2.45. And there's a Scottish Football Extra Christmas special, Christmas Day from 11.45. when we at long last find out the answer to the big question of what did Stephen Craig and get Chris Sutton for Christmas? If it was my choice, I'd have got him nothing, but apparently I had to buy him something. <laughs> and that will uh, rerun again before the Dundee Celtic game on Boxing Day. And our build-up to that match from Dens Park starts at midday. forward, out comes Fodringham. And I imagine Rangers will look at the, you know, this is what, first 30 minutes and think, Declan John hasn't really been involved in the game. Pandeus on the right-hand side hasn't really been involved in the game, so they're almost playing with two men down, and that's two players you want to go and affect the game, try and pose problems. They're going to have to try and get involved and be more positive when they do get the uh, possession of the football. Tavernier, and it's with Brophy, Danny Wilson coming in to save the day, Malumbu though wins it back for Kilmarnock, and turning to safety, it's been an assured performance from him, O'Donnell looks long to Boyd, Tavernier now can complete the clearance, Broadfoot, that's for Declan John, but he'll just let that one run over the touchline. Hodson looking for options. Good and drink to Kirk Broadfoot. Plus Kilmarnock are missing Gordon Greer, he's out with a groin injury. He had been the mainstay of that back four, but Scott Boyd is come in and done a decent job, made his first start of the season against Motherwell, got the winning goal last weekend. The difference in Stein between the two sides is that Morelis isn't big enough and physical enough to hold the ball up and win headers. Kilmarnock can be direct because they've got Chris Boyd who can pose problems, so the style of play suits Kilmarnock, for Rangers it doesn't, long hopeful balls forward. Hey, 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 hey. Malumbu. Dicker to power, and a space out here for O'Donnell. It's faced by Hodson, John coming back in to make the sliding challenge, and Rangers tidy things up. Managed to get the flick on, but David Bates covering for Rangers. And Jason Holton, and he's looking for width out on that right hand side. And into the feet of Morelos. McCrory, robbed of it by Malumbu. Here comes Broadfoot, and they're looking for that ball in behind Tavernier. One thing he has plenty of is pace. And Shepherds it out for a goal kick, better defending from the Rangers right back. Yeah, he does well there, to be fair with James Salvanier, he gets his body in and, and brave enough to use his strength to see it out for a goal kick. I think Rangers are just lacking a wee bit of idea, a wee bit of cohesion, you know, a wee bit of spark. I think Declan John so far has struggled to influence the game. I think Candias has been the same, touching on what Craig was saying. I think when you play against a team that, that floods the middle of the pitch, you, you really do need to move the ball quicker. And, 
I think the game plan to get it forward to Morales, you have to back that up with second balls, and, and I don't think Ross and Jason Holt have got far enough up the pitch yet to, to try and influence that. There's plenty on offer for both sides this afternoon, of course, playing first ahead of the five three o'clock kickoffs. Rangers can go second. Their direct rivals, Aberdeen are at Celtic Park. Kamarnik looking for a place in the top six and that's where they would dearly love to get a finishing position. They haven't finished in the top six since 2011. Well, you can just see how Steve Clark is completely rejuvenated the full club. You know, the supporters are completely with the team. This was a place where they struggled to win at home. They've won two home games in a row, and suddenly now the fans start to believe in what he's doing, and the players believe in him. There seems a real continuity down here at Kermanic, where in the years gone by, Roy, there was always a disconnect. So well done to Steve Clark, particularly for helping that out. And I think that's something that his predecessor, Lee McCulloch, was trying to target, was to try and regenerate the character and the connection between the fans and the club. Didn't quite work out for him, but Steve Clark doing a fine job. Brophy. Knocked out of play by Biggs. There just seems a real energy about them, doesn't it? Come on, you know, they believe in what they're doing. Everybody's full of running. They know the crowd are pushing them on. They're carrying the ball forward. They're not letting Rangers settle in possession of it. Everything just seems to be right at the minute for the home side. Nice to see, Craggs. It's back-to-back -back home wins for Kilmarnock against Partick Thistle, who they took five past. Another one last weekend. It's the first time in just under three years that they've managed to win back-to-back -back home games. That's certainly how you start to build a connection between your local support and the club. Scottish football extra on Friday night from 7 p.m. And we are in Paisley for a big battle in the championship between St Mirren and Dundee United. That's on BT Sport 2 HD. An absolute cracker in store, really. Absolutely will be. It's going to be a very interesting title race in that division. Up goes Dicker. Now Boyd. Malumbu finds Jones. McCrory just bringing some help across to Tavernier. He's been the best player on the pitch, Malumbu. Rory he really has. He's dictated play. He's picked up scraps. He's you know he's kept things simple. You know what Chris Boyd liked to be, but they are a bit composure to play out wide to Jordan Jones, and Malumbu picks it up and, and plays the right pass. You can see that he's played at a really good level. I think they've just out-muscled Rangers in midfield. McCrory and Jason Holt don't have a huge physical presence. And Malumbu, Dicker and Power, far too big and too powerful, too strong for them. Well, Yusuf Malumbu was just signed towards the tail end of November. He's started three games. They picked up seven points out of those three games. Says it all. This is where Graham Dorans has missed Craggs. That what he brings to the team, that creativity spark, that bit, you know, we bit further forward the pitches. You know, it's not overly natural for Ross. And I think Jason, you know, he's a live wire. He, you know, he gets about the pitch. He's, you know, he's everywhere. But you know, really lacking to, to create a wee bit of spark in that final third. And I think it comes through the personnel. Tavernier now. Morello spun. That. Give Windass a chance, but Monarch have the bodies in the right area. One of them being Yusuf Malumbu, who has been fouled the entire time. Will they call him quickly on the scene? Terrific, isn't it? You know, he never knows when he's beaten. He's quite prepared to put his body in the line, uses his body really well to wriggle out of positions, and there's three or four Rangers players having a go, and Malumbu wins a free kick. He's been the superstar in the first half, standout player by a mile. will be 
loving having him here at Rugby Park. On a deal until the end of the season. Here comes Hudson. Rangers fans trying to lift their side. Eight minutes to go until the break. The away fans occupying both ends, as usual, at Rugby Park. They're packed out their allocation. Tavernier. The ball just spins nicely for Windass. Candeas neatly done to Tavernier. With Candace again, Windass with a chance to deliver and finds Declan John! And a day after signing for the club permanently, Declan John opens the scoring in Rugby Park and Rangers leads. And this is the first time really the Rangers front three or four players have connected in and around to come on and go. It's a terrifically well worked goal. It was patience, it was precision. Candace is very clever. Little ball down the side, Windass. He knows all the defenders are going to try and protect the goal. Declan John, very clever. Peels off to the edge of the box. It's an excellent finish. Is it against the run of play? It probably is. But Graham Murray won't mind. Rangers won't mind. They lead 1-0. Yeah, we talk about quality and a final thought, and it's really the first time we've seen any, any for the Rangers today. Clever interplay in the wide area, and then it's a terrific ball in. It really is. He just puts his head down and tries to put in a good area. And Declan John, to be fair to him, on his weaker side, hit the target as everybody would like to see, and he puts Rangers one nil up. Well, Kilmarnock better watch out because the last time he scored, he popped up with another in the space of a couple of minutes against Hamilton. Graham Murray will hope now that will inject a bit of life into his team. They've been a little bit flat, they haven't really affected the game. He'll be now thinking, go on, there's your opportunity. You've scored against the run of play. Can you carry that on? Hold on to Windass, but Scott Boyd losing out to Morelos and now trying to unleash the goal scorer, Declan John. Be interesting to see how these next five minutes goes because goals change games and you know can you go on and get another before half time and put the game to bed or, or can Kilmarnock can consolidate and try and get in one 0 down because it's really up 39 minutes they've not done much wrong. Well foul by Jason Holt on Eamon Brophy. Looked a sore one. I think it's a little bit cheeky from Jason Holt. I think it looked a little bit high up his right calf, and he's done very well. Ian and Brophy to jump up and not have too much to say for it. Needless to say, Jason Holt didn't agree with Willie Collum. Power. McDonald. That's one thing you can see there on John. We haven't had defensive, defensive instinct. He's helping Hodgson at the back. Working really hard to get back and help him out. O'Donnell back to Dicker. Malumbu attacking it. Knocked down by Scott Boy, but Holt gets the counter attack going, and now it's Candace. Space closed off by Jordan Jones, though. I think the goal has energised Rangers, you know. I think that resilience to stay in the game when you're not playing well wasn't there under the previous manager. You know, that side would have fell away, but they've shown a steady determination under Graham Murphy. At times when they're up against it, they'll stay in the game and fight. Morelos still has it tight to the byline. Still battling away, but unable to win the corner. He's a strong boy, Morales, he really is. A bit like Malumbo, you know, they're good at using their body. Could be tussle there on the byline. This is the goal again. This is Josh Windass down the right hand side. Declan John coming in, but I feel as if that's where Windass is more comfortable in the wide areas. 
Declan John probably putting the team for his defensive responsibilities at times to double up with Lee Hodgson, but he gets the goal. Celebrating with the supporters. No booking for leaving the field of play in the celebration. I'm very surprised he didn't get booked, absolutely. You know, we've watched it many times. I remember Lee Griffiths and James Forrest and last season up at St Johnston when he got booked. So I'm very surprised Declan John didn't get booked. Not a rule that I agree with, but Willie Collin usually a stickler for the rules. Well, he's had a couple wrong so far this afternoon, really. Here comes Broadfoot. John on, but O'Donnell lofting it forward for Brophy, who is Wilson, tight touch. O'Donnell wheels up in a long throw, and the decision goes against Chris Boyd. The morning fans in front of us thought it was a penalty kick he was going to give initially. But you know, he's certainly upsetting them. He's putting himself about, he's not giving them a free jump. He may have just been ever so slightly pulling Lee Hudson. Windass won the header well, and here goes Declan John. Candace and McDonald had to keep his eyes on it. Yeah, more pe positive play from Declan John there, picking the ball up, going in on his weaker right foot. Actually thought he was going to unleash a shot, but just played it just behind Candace a wee bit. I think if he played it that wee bit faster, he might have got a better effort of a shot, but a good save for Jamie McDonald. And Wilson just had to steady himself and got the header back to his goalkeeper. I think it's fair to say the first half. Uh, first half hasn't been a thing of beauty, but it's been compelling watching. You always think something's going to happen, there's incidents, lots of tackles, lots of coming together. Good game to watch. Well, Rangers ahead, but there's certainly plenty of work to be done. If they're to keep a hold of the three points. Holt, they've certainly got better as the game has gone on. Hooked out massively wow. by the goal, and what a ball that is by Declan John, and Morelos was just an inch away from making it 2-0 right on half-time. What an incredible cross from Declan John, just in that little tunnel of doubt between Kurt Broadfoot and the goalkeeper. Big let off for Kilmarnock. Well, that is the final act. Kilmarnock survive that last attack, but it is Rangers who lead at the break by a goal to nil. To the big talking point of the first half, if you like, and it's James Tavernier. Yellow card, first of all, an absolute certainty, Chris, but should he have received a second yellow card in that first half? Do you know what? I mean, of course, that's, that's a yellow card. With the second one, look, I think Willie Collum got this right not to send him off. I, I just think that Jones has done him with a bit of skill as he lunged. In, you know, he gets done with a, with a bit of skill, you know. Just because he goes past Tavernier in that situation doesn't make it an automatic yellow for that. I guess it depends on the attack, the way the attack might develop. Yeah, if the absolutely. Thinks he's going past him and it's Listen, dangerous. I, I'm a Chris in this room. There's no such thing as a foul anymore. Everything's got to be a yellow or a red card. He definitely, the first one, absolute yellow card. The second one, I know Tom will mention in Cole Coleman, he be spot on. He gets caught square on with his body rather than side on. Listen, if he hadn't been booked, it's a funny one, if, it's a contradiction in terms. If he hadn't been booked for the first one, yeah. he'd probably have picked up the booking. But I, I, I believe that the referee made the right decision of not sending him off. But he'll have to be very, very careful now. Yeah, of course. I'm not sure he's getting the ball the other side. Anyway, I think Bates was round, uh, uh, you know, and cleared it. But, uh, no, you know, one more foul and he will be off. So you're saying well done to the referee so far today? Well done, Willie Collum. OK, all right. Right, we'll be back with you in a few minutes' time. Declan John, who just put pen to paper on a new contract at Rangers this week, has put Rangers ahead here. Second 45 is next.
Rangers are leading 1-0 at the break here at Rugby Park. I guess the question is, how can Kilmarnock get themselves back into it? Because they haven't created an awful lot in the first half, Alan. No, they haven't. But what they've been doing is, that, as I said, they have been more direct in the first half. And it's interesting. I don't know whether Boyd has fancied it before, but when the ball's in the right-hand side with Taylor, he definitely drifts the other side of uh, Bates and in between him and Tavernier for the longer ball the diagonal so that's what I, see. I don't see them attempting to play through Rangers at all they've obviously got pace on the left hand side with Jones so it'll be interesting it's really only Aiden Brophy who's had a half chance in the first half for them yeah look I don't think it was an easy chance I haven't been creative enough in the final third and uh, you know Steve Clark will be talking about that at half time they have to you know be more positive get the ball out to Jones you know Tavernier is on a booking he's on his last chance try and expose him, but they're still in it. Uh, they can look to the bench actually, Chris Burke's on the bench as well, they've got a few attacking options there. Well absolutely, it wouldn't surprise me to see, I think the one thing that they, they have been lacking obviously with them above, Boyd is not just as mobile as he once was, so they are going more direct with him. Buck obviously come on, he has got a track record to come on, scored equaliser in the, what was it, 90 second minute at Ivers Park, so I would expect Steve to keep it very much the way it is for the first 10 15 minutes of this half, see how it goes, then you do the possibility of uh, making a change. They've also got Irwin, he hasn't been a hit yeah. so far for Kilmarnock, but what he will do, I mean, Chris Boyd offers nothing running him behind, he can't run anymore. Irwin will offer that threat. Right, okay, here's an option off the bench. Back over to your match commentators Kevin Thompson, Stephen Cragen, and Rory Hamilton. Well, thank you very much, Daryl. Graham Marty going through uh, his first team talk as the full time boss. Seen Plenty disagreements on the pitch, on the pitch, most of that directed towards Willie Collin, but I think probably the most aghast I've seen anyone this season was Stephen Cragen at Chris Sutton's half-time analysis of James Tavernier's not yellow card. Well, let's say it must be the season of goodwill on the presentation platform. For that not to be a second yellow card, and by the way, just because you're not getting the ball is completely irrelevant. It's a yellow card and Tavernier should be off. He should know better. Chris will have his comeback. And Kilmarnock might to come back in the second 45. Stephen O'Donnell. He had a few opportunities to deliver towards some of the bigger men in the middle. And Broadfoot is up for it. Boyd. Just had his back to the ball for a second, and Kilmarnock will have a chance to deliver once more. The ball had, in fact, gone out. It's rather blustery down at the corner flag, so it will be a corner kick. It's a good, good asset to have that long throw, Rory. You know, they're quite happy to get cut Broadfoot up, Boyd in the box, people in amongst it to try and cause a wee, a wee bit of confusion in the Rangers' defence. Well, Jordan Jones, who really caused most of the problems for the Rangers rear guard in that first half, will take this corner right footed. There's Chris Boyd straight at Fodringham. He was given a bit of space. Well, it's where Kamarnik have the height advantage over Rangers, just putting the ball into an area, allowing Chris Boyd, allowing Broadfoot to go and try and attack it. Knocked out by O'Donnell. Former Partick Thistle man who signed from Luton Town over the summer. It's another squad overhaul at Rugby Park. Seems to be most summers there. A number of players coming in. Also, this week Steve Clark reiterated that here he sees his future Kilmarnock and certainly will not be leaving for another Scottish club Are you nodding towards Rangers Roy is that what you're trying to say certainly know that was the line this week wasn't it that Steve Clark could potentially be the next Rangers manager he was very clever very coy in his press conference he said listen I'm here at Kilmarnock I'm doing well I'm enjoying the job I want to be here long term Been there and done it down in England. Boss at Reading and West Brom took them to eighth in the Premier League, but also as an assistant at Newcastle under Ruud Hulett, Chelsea under Jose Mourinho, West Ham under Gianfranco Zola, 
Liverpool under Kenny Dalglish. Not a bad five-a-side team, that. Boyd. And it's Taylor. And it was just too far in front of power, but the last touch came off a Rangers player. Excellent play by on Chris Boyd using his strength, holding the ball up, but the willingness of Greg Taylor to get himself forward, get a ball in the box, poses Rangers problems. And Jones will come all the way across from the left-hand side to take this. And you can see the wind. It caused problems. It's a good ball in, Morelos flicks it away. And Candace can launch it up towards halfway. The last man back is Stephen O'Donnell. Not so accurate with that one. Malumbu lost out to Tavernier. Now Morelos. Candeas just lost control. Malumbu knocks it off the Portuguese winger. He's not been good enough today, Candeas, for me. You know, it's become a little bit rough, a little bit sticky in the game. Candeas has to give a little bit more for his team. As Ross McCrory gives away a free kick, you can see McCrory, you can see Hall giving everything. Graham Murray will demand his players commit themselves in every game. You wonder as the game goes on, cracks that, that while Ross McCrory and Jason Hall demand that Candias and Declan John tuck in a wee bit to try and protect as the game goes deep into it, you know, depending on how it pans out, while they, while they want them a wee bit tighter and not playing so wide. Probably should be doing it now, Kevin. Dicker for Boyd, but a drop for Hudson. Declan John wants it down the line. Coming back was Brophy. Hudson gets it quickly from John, and now Morelos. Power back to Taylor. It's just the one defeat away from home in the Premiership for Rangers this season, that came at Dens Park last month. It was just a squad of players mentally can't cope with the expectation of Ibrox every single week. And away from home might just give them that little bit of release, Roy. They can go and express themselves a little bit more without the pressure of 50,000 fans. I've been doing my homework on that. Strangely, it kind of happens across the league. There's only four teams have a better home record than away from home. Them being Hearts, who have played a lot of their games at Murrayfield, Motherwell, Dundee and Partick Thistle. The rest have all picked up more points on the road. That shows then that teams away from home are sitting in and being compact. The opposition can't break them down or playing counter-attacking football, so... But great homework, right? If you look at Kilmarnock's record, eight points here at Rugby Park, 14 away from home. And as we know, Rangers have had their troubles. That Ibrox defeats to Hibernian, Celtic, St Johnston and Hamilton Academical. Here's Brophy. Gets help from O'Donnell. Closely watched by Declan John. And O'Donnell's got by him, he was then timed. Well, Willie Collin played the advantage, then goes across, good refereeing before delivering the yellow card to Declan John, the goal scorer. It's just real, no real need to get so tight, he's got him where he wants him, there's no need to fight and fight and fight and fight, and you can see he's got his arms around his waist, and a fair play to O'Donnell, he won a good free kick in a dangerous area for Pomona. And the thing after he scored and he went off the pitch into the crowd, that could have been a second yellow card, so it just shows such a fine line, and also Wally Collins' decision not to book him for the celebration for the goal. Gary Dicker over the free kick, in with pace and attacks! Oh, oh, what a save by Fodringham! Keeps out Boyd's header. It's just a simply terrific save, isn't it? Chris Boyd all afternoon has been posing problems. The rest following him from that short distance to get the ball up and over the crossbar. Wonderful save to keep the side 1-0 up. 
Dicko will look for more of the same, but first of all, he just needs to get the ball to stay in the quadrant. Dicker takes, flatter delivery. Morelos in place to clear. Here's power. Nicely done from him. Swung in by Dicker. Broadfoot look for the turn. Kovanek just looking to up their game and to try and get back to level pegging. It's almost the same pattern as the first half, isn't it? Kovanek on the front foot. You know, apart from that crisp point header, no real clear cut chances, but forcing Rangers to defend and to force them back towards their own goal. Donald will deliver this. Broadfoot's still up. He is the target. Won by Wilson. And away from Hudson. Dicker has power alongside him. Broadfoot knocks it on. It's Chris Bond! What a save once more from Wes Vodringham. And he's keeping Rangers ahead right now. Malumbu has commanded knock at the door once more. Well done, Wes Fotheringham again, and Rangers are all over the place, nobody's picking up, they're not winning any headers, come on, it would have loved that to fire the Chris Boyd. Another great save, Fotheringham, though. O'Donnell, again, Broadfoot, and... Really came quickly at Brophy. Started really, really well, come on, right in the front foot, and... You know, echoing what Craig said there, fair play to Wes Fotheringham, he's not done much in the game, but... Two terrific saves, typical Chris Boyd, head down, hits the target, gives himself an opportunity to score a goal. So Donald to wind up another of these long throws again. It's towards Broadfoot. Dicker now. Donald looking to measure one into Broadfoot. This time it's the woodwork that denies Kilmarnock. Chance after chance. They're really right in the luck, but what a wonderful ball in by Stephen O'Donnell. Brophy does the thing all a striker should do. Get across the first defender, make good contact with the ball. If it's not West Fottingham, it's the goal post. Rangers riding their luck. Kilmarnock always pushing. We are more than not be happy. They really have started sloppy in the second half, Rangers. And if it wasn't for West Fottingham, they could find themselves 2-1 down here. Malumbu to Brophy. Dicker just with a heavy touch and that allowed McCrory in. Morelos, now John. Holt. McCrory. Tavernier. Candace. It's good link up. Now Brophy on the break. It's a fine challenge from McCrory. That's end-to-end -end stuff right now. And here goes Jones and the anticipation of the Kilmarnock fans when he gets it. One-on-one -on -one with Tavernier, although Candace has come to help out. Fodringham grabs it at the second attempt. The game really is moving at a ferocious pace, but it's Jordan Jones up against Tavernier. Tavernier frightened to go anywhere near him. He knows he can't touch him, he knows it could be a foul and potentially a second yellow card. Kilmarnock should second Jordan Jones with the ball. First real time in the second half that Jones has got the ball at his feet and the chance to turn and run at the defence. I think this is the Ross McCrory challenge. Great tackle, isn't it? You know, just times it to perfection. More often than not, when you see a player going to ground, it's always going to be a free kick to the opposition, but well done, young man. 19-year-old from Ayrshire. Wilson. And John helped it on to Windass. Malumbu is there to regain possession for Kilmarnock. Boyd rises, and what's there? An arm in the face of David Bates, well, Chris Boyd is the recipient of the yellow card. 
I was quick to apologise there on, on young David Bates. He's led with his, it's not like Boyd, he's led with his, with his left arm, and you can see it just catches him there. But I think it's a difficult art to do, you know, to get up and challenge for the ball without having your, your arms high to give yourself a wee bit of leverage. But you know, he's certainly not a malicious player, Chris Boyd. I think it's certainly a hand in the face, you know, it's not a swinging arm, it's not an elbow, just leading with his hand. So one of the decisions that Willie Collins got right this afternoon, yellow card. Holt. Hudson. Broadfoot. And Wilson in charge. And Jones was the man hurtling after Wes Fodringham. And McCrory. John to Windass. And quickly on to Holton. There's space out here for Candace, the top assist maker in the division. Tavernier. Candace, that's a better ball in. It found Windass, and he should have scored. What a terrific cross. I'll say one thing this afternoon, we've saw some terrific deliveries from both sides. Josh Windass has to score for me, it's right on a plate for him, it's where you want it. Misses all the defenders, I believe in what you're doing. I'm not too sure he really believed he was going to score, but a big let off for Kilmarnock. Well, it really is a terrific ball for Candias, it's one thing that he does really well, Craggs. he puts it in very early, which is hard to defend against. He had his first shot and then his second shot, and you know, Josh will be disappointed when he sees that one back. I always think Josh Windows is a conundrum. You know, today Green Murdy's playing him in behind as a number 10. I think his best position is off the left hand side, and I think today he's had no real impact in the game. Yes, he had a header there, but I think for him to be in the game, be at his best, he needs to be off either the left or off the right. I think he, I think he told all the reporters and all the clubs in the country that they, they were going to try and utilise him in a central area and use his speed and gave every defence a, a wee incline on in how Graham Murray would like him to play. But I agree, Craig. I, I think when he's got the ball out wide and he's driving at people, he's at his best. Balloon boot. Tavernier intercepts, and now McCrory. It's a chase on for Morelos, and he'll relish this up against Scott Boyd. Still Morelos, who goes down and wins the free kick. It's just it's sloppy there for Chris Boyd, eh, for Scott Boyd, sorry. I just think that sometimes centre-halves in, in this league up here, that, they, that they've already been second-best, he's got his body and he's done really well. Just jockey, just stand up, don't commit a foul in a solid area to allow Rangers to put the ball in the box. It's great tenacity though, wasn't it? You know, he wasn't favourite for that ball, but he showed the willingness to go and get it, and get his team up the pitch, and boy, did they need it. And Declan John, the goal scorer to measure this free kick. Out comes Jamie McDonald. Well, he didn't need to come out very far. Yeah, just a wee bit floaty there from Declan John. The right angle on it, but it had to be that tiny wee bit lower. Taylor looks up the line for Jones. McCrory can only help it on to Malumbu. Now Taylor, Jones demands the ball to feet away from McCrory, now has a run at Tavernier. It's well done by James Tavernier. Broadfoot. And long it goes, the direct approach to Boyd. He looks to link up with his strike partner, Brophy! And it just went straight at Fodringham, who stood tall. Still not clear yet. Kilmarnock will really feel that they've created enough chances to be level here. Jones gets it to Taylor. It's Greg Taylor, pulls it back perfectly. And O'Donnell's effort cleared off the line by Hudson. The Rangers are really struggling to stay alive. Declan Jones somehow ends up on the right-hand side. Stephen O'Donnell with a shot, cleared off the line. 
really unfortunate. Graham Murdy's going to have to change something, or it's going to be too late. Dicker. Can Kilmarnock get reward for their dominance? Taylor in. Boyd was up and will drop for Dicker. There's a belief at Rugby Park that a goal is coming. And it's inches wide from Kurt Broadford. Wow. I can't believe Kilmarnock are level in this game. Another great cross in Kurt Broadford all day long. Good fancy his opportunity. Nice little thing to the back post, and somehow the Rangers go. They see it. It's like a cup tie, this Rory. It really is. It's end to end. It's the ball's flying around everywhere. I, I can't believe there's not Rangers playing that part. They can put their foot in the ball, slow things down, and start flicking in corners, get Morales running, get Josh Windass running. You know, it's all Kamanic at the moment, and you know they're really knocking on the door. I think that was a good save by Wes Foringham. To be honest, it's one of the few saves we had to do anything. He just stood tall and hit off his chest, but Rangers goal leading John Life. Well, Kamani fans looking for offside. It is play on and it is win that but the connection wasn't clean. I think that comes down to leaders on the park at times. Really, you know, just leave it composure. You know, someone telling the young lads just to put your foot in a ball, don't be scared to flick it in a corner. Good opportunity there for Josh. I think when he sees that one back, he'll be disappointed. Almost a snapshot on the edge of the box, but I think he'll still back himself to be hitting the target from there. And there's uh, times like these when the absentees in this Rangers side, you look to Miller, Wallace, Dorans, Alves, that becomes quite a big thing in a game where you've played 64 minutes, you've got, you know, 25 to go. And you're one up, you've got to see the game out, but they don't have so many of those experienced heads. I've seen them dig in really deep at Easter Road, you know, when they've you know, had real well on top in that second half. And, you know, it's a really good asset to have to be able to dig in deep and win games when you're not playing particularly well. But I think when you look around the team, who are the leaders on the pitch? Who are the ones that settle the young boys? Who are the ones that take a wee bit of structure and can, can slow the game down? Morelos has it. Rory now. Now Holt to Hodgson. Critical period in the game. And John goes by his man and gets the decision. Well, it's almost a relief for Rangers to be away from their goal. You know, just win the free kick, take your time, kill the play down. I think it's a free kick. Play by Declan John, an opportunity to Rangers to put the ball in the box, but also to give West Fothingham a little bit of breathing space. He's had a tough opening 20 minutes of the second half. All oh, come on, can Rangers get that second goal against the run of play? Suddenly, the Rangers goalkeeper has answered every question that's been thrown at him by the Kilmarnock attack. Tavernier has now found the right spot, according to Willie Collins, to place his free kick. And then choke. Tavernier's ball in. It's just flicked away by Scott Boyd. Come on, defence had to retreat a long way to get that one away from goal. Now it's with Morelos. Candeas. Yes. BT Sport and score is back this afternoon from 2.45, bringing you updates from around the country. We've got a Scottish Football Extra Christmas special on Christmas Day from 11.45. And that is also repeated on Boxing Day, ahead of our live game at Dens Park between Dundee and Celtic. The match coverage starts from midday, BT Sport 1 HD. I just wonder what Graham Murray think of changing his shape. Will he think of maybe bringing a third centre half on just to try and shore up defensively because you know they're not the biggest at the back range, they're not the biggest all over the pitch and set plays and particularly he's posting problems. Well perhaps his issue with that is that they are already very short at the back. Fabio Cardoso really the only option for them in defence. Jones feeds it through to Boy to his offside. Almost lightning quick, Chris Boyd. 
He's just offside, you can see it. He's just trying to read the pass. He was hoping the pass would have came a little bit quicker. Just offside. Terrific play again for Jordan Jones. He really has been a thorn in James Tavernier's back to the Every time he's squared him up, every time he's chopped direction, and you know, almost an inch perfect pa pass for Chris Boyd. Scott Boyd. And some Malumbu, just a lack of communication between he and Jordan Jones there. Corey to Tavernier, but he gives it straight to Boyd. And Bates using his strength up against Eamon Brophy. Holt. And put under pressure by Gary Dicker. By Josh Windass. So it's going to be an interesting final 20 minutes or so. Slender lead for Rangers and Kamarnik have been throwing everything at trying to get an equaliser. Steve Clark will be delighted the way his team have played. You know, the opportunities they've created, the way they've approached the game, they've showed no fear, no respect towards Rangers, and you'll be bemused at how they're not level in this game because they've deserved it with their overall play and the chances created. Morelos finds himself a little deeper than usual. McCrory sprays the pass out to John. Now Holt. there of Greg Taylor. Yeah, he does that really well, Morales, he really does. He's always second best when he runs in that channel. I don't know if it's because he's time of the run or the pass is not quite good enough for him, but when he gets that body and even when he's against the odds, he, when he does really well there to get Rangers up the pitch. Tavernier holds first time ball. Dicker had to go and win it at the second attempt. Jordan Jones skips away from Holt, but Tavernier was well placed. Morelos is offside. Just wonder now is it time for Steve Clark to try something different? You know, Brophy and Boyd, he's got Lee Irwin in the bench to come on, Chris Burton maybe to come on as well. Just something to change it up, try and get this breakthrough. Brophy did well there, so he delivered towards Boyd by O'Donnell. Brophy wants more, and he got turned, and he hits the deck. That's the question of Willie Collum, who is unmoved. My first thought's not uh, no penalty. Brophy does well to adjust his body and put it around, but both players have got a hand on each other. It's hard for the referee to call that one. Good strong play by Brophy initially. Good strong play by Wilson. Willie Collum got it right. Donald brought it again the target, there wasn't quite enough on it. Donald has it back. This time, cutting in field, it's power. But Wilson has to be careful there, Donald was closing in. Dicker, it's picked off by Candace. Morelos now, and there's to go beyond him, but he does collect, he's got Windass as the man in the middle, Broadford sticks to his task well. Morelos, just a bit of miscontrol allowed. Come on, midfield to snap in and win the ball back.
Hudson to Holt. Two pick for Rangers. Yeah, they seem to have taken the sting out of the game in the last five or ten minutes, Rangers. Even just making five or six passes, even if you're not really going anywhere, it just almost relieves a little bit of pressure, builds a little bit of confidence. Morales has been a good outball for them during this spell as well. So they've almost calmed Kilmarnock down a little bit, which is why I'm thinking Steve Clark may have to make a change. Something to give Kilmarnock some encouragement. Rangers have got ten points so far from winning positions this season. Windass, no handball, and he doesn't get the corner. It will just be a goal kick. Willie Collum has some action to take. Morelos and Broadfoot will have a word. Yeah, there was a little bit of a decision there. The Camargue fans weren't happy with the handball from Josh Windass. I think we can quite clearly see it is. But it's all due to the bounce on the pitch. But he helps the ball on. But it was Kirk Broadfoot and Morelis. Kirk Broadfoot just leaving a little bit on him. Morelis not frightened to tell him what he thinks. Here goes Jones. Still going. Jordan Jones. Blocked by the chest of Danny Wilson. In glimpses he's been terrific today, Rory, well, he really has, he's, you know, he's tried to make things happen for, for Kilmarnock. Every time he's picked up the ball he's been really positive, he's looked after it when it's been in tight areas and there's been a real light wire for Kilmarnock. Well, Dicker just turned into trouble there. Candace looking to use his pace, Candace has ball across! And again, just inches away from Morelos converting. You can see here, he's got, he's got one thing to go down the line and Oh, terrific ball on he's as the games wore on he was very quiet in the first half but he started to influence the game down that right side and one thing about this boy after watching him for quite a few games this year is he gets his head down and he puts balls in lovely areas and the one thing about Morales as well he's normally in between these sticks trying to score himself a goal this boy gets the decision to the ironic cheers of the home support Weather the storm a wee bit Rangers, I think. Well, Scottish football extra back again on Friday from 7 pm ahead of the big clash in the championship between the top two, St Mirren and Dundee United. Final offering of Scottish football in 2017. Jones again Tavernier gets the help from Candace as they double up on the Northern Irish winger I actually feel it's helped James Tavernier's defending the fact he's on a yellow card because he's not being rash he's timing his tackles he's not diving in he's staying beside Jones you know you know Jones has been good but Tavernier's won some good tackles in the second half all due to his timing in his head mentally Broadfoot to O'Donnell who's been wildly down this right hand side covered some amount of distance. Now oh, Donald remains down at the byline. Kamarnik down to 10 for now. Rangers look to profit. It's won back by Jones against Windass. The two 11s going head to head. And Brophy could be in here. Boyd's in the middle. It's in the game in the first half and he's been a wee bit quiet in the second half he's not had it all his own way clever pass to start where it really was and Brophy fair play him he's been a live wire all day and that man typical in between these sticks putting the ball in the back of the net 
Well, and Chris Boyd moves into double figures for the season. Four goals in his last four games. It didn't matter that they were down to ten men. Kilmarnock's best moment of the game. And it utilises the equaliser. Well, it was just the two centre halves as that ball was coming over the top to Brophy. Stepped out, hands in the air, and that allowed Boyd the extra yard or two of space to get in behind and he really had a tap in he doesn't miss those well now it's anyone's to step up and win this Malumbu well he's an immovable force in that midfield and now Dicker looks over the top Wilson loses out to Brophy, in comes Bates, his use of Malumbo is deflected at Bates! And two in quick succession, Kamarnik have turned this one around! Boyd at the double, against his old club! Dramatic turnaround in Rugby Park! And you can't say it hasn't been deserved, they've been the better team for long spells in this game. Another simple ball over the top. It's not dealt with by Danny Wilson. Eamon Brophy picks it up really well. Malumbo has the shot. But Chris Boyd, always alert. Always expecting the ball to drop to him. Always trying to flick the ball towards goal. All of an instinct. The smile tells it all. Two wonderful finishes by a top-class centre-forward. He actually comes from Malumbo doing really, really well in a tight area. Using his body like he's done all afternoon. Gets out of a tight area. And it's him that ends up backing it up on the edge of the box as well. Gets his shot off and typical instinct for Chris Boyd. Boy, we've got a game on our hands. Morelos wins the free kick and Rangers from having been in front just a few minutes ago now find themselves desperately having to go forward and look for an equaliser themselves that they were denying Kilmarnock for long, long periods. They have to change their entire mentality now. Likewise, Kilmarnock, who have something to protect now. Tavernier takes. It's a good ball in. Power away. Tavernier. Candeus. It's away by Scott Boyd. Power does well. And Jones keeps it in. They look for Brophy, who knew that he was offside. Well, it's fair to say Rangers haven't been convincing all afternoon. You know, they've rode their luck, they've stayed in the game. Come on, it deserved to be in front, they've been the better team. That's why Boyd's still playing at the top level and scoring goals. Malumbi's been terrific. But the game's all been putting the ball in the back of the net, and there's nobody better in the business than the big man. All his instinctive qualities as Rangers now look to the bench in order to go in search of a goal. Eduardo Herrera being ready. Morelos. Malumbu using that body strength to win the tussle with Morelos. It has been terrific all day, Malumbu really has. Top. Top players know how to put their bodies in and how to use their bodies and you know he's done it terrifically well and probably arguably against one of the, the strongest players in the Premier League I think. I think I think Morales is as strong as anyone, he backs in as good as anyone, but typical Malumbo he's come off come off first best so far. So off comes Lee Hodgson on his return to Rugby Park and on comes Eduardo Herrera. Welcome to full-time management, Graham Murta. And you think you're doing OK, you think you've weathered the storm, and suddenly within a couple of minutes, the game is completely taken away from you. And he's only got seven and a half minutes to go and chase this. Herrera now. Uh, just turns into trouble. Uh, I wouldn't have been in the plan for Graham Murta to, to come here, especially the way form's been good. Home form has been the, been the problem for Rangers this year, but to get off to a defeat with only seven or eight minutes to go is I certainly wouldn't have been on the game plan.
Crawley. Now to John. Herrera. Back it comes to John. Morelos is in the middle. And McDonald hasn't got enough on it. A really important intervention. I think it was Gary Dicker coming in. Because that was going to drop for Morelos. Well, I think they deserve this little bit of luck, Kilmarnock. You know, they played ever so well. McDonald goes flapping for a cross. Gary Dicker takes it off the toe of Morelos. You've seen his frustrations, but Jimmy McDonald just grateful the ball landed back in his hands. Fodringham playing an unlikely one two there with Tavernier. Candace, here's Herrera. The decision goes against Dicker, and he is the next in the book. A yellow card for the Kilmarnock number eight. It's just two players going for the ball. Herrera just gets there ahead of Gary Tech. I don't think there's any malice in the tackle one little bit, but it's a clear yellow. Well, Kilmarnock are looking to make a change. It's even Brophy who will be going off the man who made that first goal to get Kilmarnock back into the game. And it will be Stuart Finlay on loan from Newcastle United to come on and try and just sure things up. Steve Clark will be delighted with Brophy today. He's, you know, he's covered every inch. He's been everywhere in the park. He's, you know, he's been a real compliment to Chris Boyd. Tavernier's ball in. Well, Bates almost on the end of it. A few cries of handball. It's with Windas. Candace. Backs to the wall now for Kilmarnock. Malumbu still battling away. Holt back to Wilson. The Rangers' inability to keep clean sheets is really holding them back this season. Just three in the last 19 matches. I mean, this cross is just begging to be put into the back of the net from Candace. I think somebody's doing it for a handball. I've no idea whose hand it was, but... Just in the game in general, really, you know, you see the experience of Steve Clark. His team go 2-1 up. And he puts an extra defender on. Graham Murray's team are struggling, and he doesn't do it. The experienced manager against someone learning the trade. Well, a standing ovation, certainly from two of the stands for Chris Boyd. What a job he has done. He won't be getting a hat trick against his old team, but he will be more than happy with an early rest. He has been the difference. I mean, the major part in Kilmarnock's two major moments. On comes Lee Irwin to replace him. Well, twice Graham Murty has been in interim charge. Defeats to Inverness and Dundee last season when he replaced Mark Warburton for a short spell and then it's been rather longer this time around three defeats again up at Dens Park and then at home to Hamilton Academical and St Johnston total of five defeats in 14 games three defeats so far in this campaign if they can't turn this around it would be four losses in ten matches still time for Rangers power They almost look as if they're making strides, Rangers, and they look as if they're stepping forward, and then suddenly out of the blue, a couple of performances and results just raise their heads, and they're back to square one. And this is what almost has happened today. Last week against St Johnston, and today it's taking them two or three steps backwards for me. It's just under 11,500 inside Rugby Park, the highest attendance of Kilmarnock's season. The majority of them, you have to say, 
looking for an equaliser. It's a large travelling support that have come down the M77. I think the biggest disappointment for the fans will be that they watched their team 2-1 down and, and still giving the ball away sloppy, still not being able to get Kilmarnock on the back foot and have a sustained amount of pressure. Kerwin wins it back. Dicker to Taylor, now Malumbu. Taylor once more. Herrera wins it, but power now to Taylor. This is good game management from Kilmarnock. Running down the clock that is inching ever closer to the 90. Taylor wins the free kick from Morelos. Drive me mad that would honestly if I was a manager I'd be going nuts. It's, it's just sloppy, it's you know he's going nowhere, they're trying to slow the game down. The one thing Kilmarnock want is a foul in the corner to slow the game down and Morales Julia obliges. Well Bates couldn't get the ball away. Time running out for Rangers. Seven defeats already this season. And they're staring at number eight. And what a boost this could be to Aberdeen ahead of their visit to Celtic Park. Irwin. Now Wilson. That's a lot of Candace. Well, it's just a throw-in. Portuguese certainly thought he should have had a foul there. I think initially my thought was it was a free kick. I think Greg Taylor just goes into Candias, but Willie Collin decided no throw-in. Well, he thought Chris Burke would get a start. He was preferred in the starting lineup. Last week, but not so today. Then it was Jordan Jones who got the nod. He certainly had a fine game, the Northern Irishman. And he's got over 90 minutes. And he's been excellent right from the start. And he'll be replaced by Burke for the final couple of minutes. I think it shows the shrewdness of Steve Clark. You know, leaving Chris Burke out, who's, you know, obviously at the other end of his career compared to Jordan Jones. and. I think Jordan Jones has been terrific all afternoon. Every time he's picked up that ball, he's been really positive and, you know, an all should call for Steve Clark. But six years since Kilmarnock won here in the league against Rangers. Manu Pascali, the late hero that day. Not over yet, there's still 90 crucial seconds here. Rangers were desperate to reclaim second spot. That's a loose one from Tavernier and Burke. Won't catch that. You know, there's so many things you can speak about the characteristics of a team and you know, the shape of organisation. Rangers just simply haven't been good enough today. You can rule all the rest out. Come on, it could be better. Show more appetite for the game, and that's why they deserve it at this moment in time, leading the game. Finlay and Dicker still scrapping away for everything in the middle. Scott Boyd will get the free kick a handball against Morelos. Things just haven't gone his way. And what a job Steve Clark is doing and using all his experience not just to get back into this game when they were one down, but to see it out. And he's not got long now to see out these final few moments. What will be a memorable victory for Kilmarnock against Rangers. Manu Hills from Solcoats in North Ayrshire, not far from here. Taylor. And that is the full time whistle. Graham Murphy's first game in full charge of 
Rangers ends in defeat. It's an eighth defeat of the season for Rangers. But what about Kilmarnock? What a turnaround for Steve Clark. And that man in your picture, Chris Boyd. Two goals against his old club. He scored 100 league goals for each side. It's going to be a very Merry Christmas for Kilmarnock. A victory gift wrapped by their number nine, Chris Boyd. It's been a Christmas cracker at Rugby Park. And the prize for Killy is a place in the top six. Full time score, Kilmarnock two, Rangers one. Thank you very much to Rory and the team. What a turnaround in that second half. Three home wins in a row for Kilmarnock. Now they couldn't win at home this season before Steve Clark arrived. And what a day as well for Chris Boyd. Ali McCoyce and Chris Sutton are here. Ali, let me just bring you in. Give me your immediate reaction to that turnaround. Another defeat for Rangers, but a big day for Kilmarnock. Absolutely. Um, i happy days at both clubs. Um, Kilmarnock's second half were absolutely fabulous. But more worrying uh, feel at this moment is, uh, uh, is actually shock at how poor that Rangers side were second half. Big boy day, brilliant, does what he, what he always does best. We know he can do that, two fantastic finishes. The second one in particular was, was top, a top goal scorer at work, it really was, it was brilliant. Um, I don't know what Bates was doing. As I say, that man there's got to be delighted with his team's performance in the second half and the results. Keeps it going for him. But dear, oh dear, Darrell, uh, uh, Rangers, I don't know where they go from here. Just on the week as well, Graham Murty appointed until the end of the season. Chris, just briefly your immediate reaction to what you've just seen. Uh, Kilmarnock were the better team, they were the dominant side. Rangers were rotten uh, this afternoon, they really were. It's a blue Christmas for Rangers. OK, we'll talk a lot more about that. Of course, review the game in full. Let me tell you what's to come in the coming days. Right after us today, it's BT Sport score from 2.45 and BT Sport 1. After that, from the Premier League, it's 6th against 7th. Burnley against Spurs from 5 o'clock. On Christmas Day, you can see our Scottish Football Extra Christmas special. That's 11.45am on BT Sport 1. We're back with you. Boxing Day from noon for Dundee against Celtic. And a big game in the Championship as well. Top two meet on the 29th. That's St Mirren against Dundee United. Friday, 7.30pm on BT Sport 2. As for the Premiership table, then ahead of the 3pm kickoffs, well, Rangers have failed to move up. They remain in third, but look at that for Kilmarnock now. Under Steve Clark, they are up into the top six for now. Those 3 p.m. games, as I mentioned, big one in the east end of Glasgow. Celtic against Aberdeen, the top two meeting there. It's Hibs against Ross County. Motherwell could do with a victory. They were up against Dundee. Partick this will be Hamilton. That's a major game in terms of the bottom of the table as well. And St Johnston play Hearts. What a second half we've just seen. What a day for Chris Boyd against his former club. His two goals made the difference. Our full review is next. Steve, we spoke at the start of the match about how it was perhaps a little bit fortunate at Ibrox the draw, but you must feel you deserve that here today. Yeah, I think you can say that. I thought we were, we were excellent from start to finish. Uh, I was a little bit bemused the fact that we found ourselves one down at half time. I asked the players just to show the same character, same attitude that they've, they've shown since I came to the club. And I think you see the second half performance was, was definitely the best since I got here. And we got a reward in the end. And we, we could have easily let our head drop because we had missed a few chances. Their goalkeeper had made a few saves. But we kept, we kept knocking away and eventually the goals came. You can see a real belief in this squad now. But what pleases you most about the way that they did continue to believe throughout that game? Not just level of performance. Uh, we've been working hard in training since I got here, and we speak all the time about level of performance. And I, I think if your performance level is is high and consistently high, you pick up points, and that's what we've been doing recently. And we look to continue on Wednesday. Graham, not the way you wanted your manager spell to start here today. A, a really frustrating afternoon for you. Yeah, I thought uh, in both halves um, they started brightly and put us under a lot of pressure, particularly physically. We managed to stand up to it in the first half, and then when we started to pass the ball, we looked okay. We looked as though we could um, dictate a little bit of the tempo, not completely. Um, and then we get a goal from a good passage of play. Um, in the second half, we talked about not letting them build momentum, not giving silly free kicks away, not letting, letting them load the box up. Um, and for the first minute, 10 minutes, that's all we did. So we invite pressure on ourselves. Once again, I think we've, we've ridden it out. Wes made some fantastic saves. 
Um, and you think, right, do I change it or do we, we've written it out? Now we're starting to actually pass the ball better. We're starting to pass the ball better. And then we give basic goals away. Both goals were very basic, not good enough defending from us. Um, and it's a sore one to take. Well, Rangers were looking very good at half-time. Declan John had put them ahead in the first 45 minutes, but what a turnaround in the second half. And it was a former player of Rangers that did the damage. Two goals for Chris Boyd. He'll be delighted. Hope you enjoyed our coverage. Have a very Merry Christmas.